Hi guys and welcome back. It's Saturday morning and I've got another planned shoot today using the Braun Pack Set 35mm camera from the 1950s. This little camera was given to me by a gentleman uh, a few years ago and he used to use this when he was a teenager back in the 50s for his family camera and taking snaps of his friends on holidays and stuff and he showed me some of the prints that he'd done with it and uh, I was like, wow, you know, that's, that's really cool. And he gave up photography and he said, look, you can have it. And he gave it to me. So I've tried it a couple of times, but not really. The last time I tried it, it leaked light. So I've I only just replaced the light seals recently. So I thought today would be a good opportunity to go and do this planned shoot. But using this camera, not any other 35mm or medium format, I'm going to use this one and see what we can come up with. First of all, if my throat's a bit funny and I'm, I'm talking a bit dry, I've, I've just got over flu, so I'm getting there. So today, uh, hopefully, it's not, it's not gonna put me back in bed again. Anyway, um, that frame up there with the aperture of 10 by eight, that's the frame that I'm gonna be uh, um, putting a print in, hopefully, later on. And the plan to shoot is to get down the beach and film seagulls. Okay, so when you're focusing with the Braun Pack set, you've got to use this little dial here, which gives you your, if you look through the viewfinder, you'll see your, your lines, your parallels coming together. And that's when you know you're in focus. And then on the lens barrel, you've got your focusing range. You've got to match that range with the indicator um, from the viewfinder. So it's pretty, pretty fiddly, and that's your aperture as well there. So yeah, I wanna go and uh, get photographs of, of seagulls. So I'm gonna be trying to feed seagulls. Hopefully no one's gonna have a go at me for feeding seagulls and, and creating carnage. I don't know how many seagulls we're gonna get, but it'd be quite interesting. But as long as I've got the composition right, I'm gonna set the camera up on a tripod and once I've got my composition, I'm gonna track the seagulls in and just keep snapping away, probably, probably 10 frames. Um, and I'll be looking for a really gritty image. I'm, I'm trying to look for, for grain and I'm trying to look for um, real high contrast in, in this photograph. So later on what I'm gonna to do to help that, this is an FP4 film inside here. So when I get back and develop, I'm gonna uh, do some stand developing, hopefully to bring out a bit more, uh, well, we'll bring out more contrast and hopefully we'll bring out grain with it as well. Um, I'm gonna be pushing the film to 400 uh, which is a couple of stops over the 125. And I'm gonna be shooting at uh, a shutter speed of 300, which is the maximum this camera can go to. So, let's get all my bag ready, let's get all my stuff in the bag, let's get down to the beach and, uh, and, and, and see if we can find some seagulls. <laughs> I'm going to be throwing my bread in this kind of area here and hopefully the seagulls will be on this wall and in the background we've got the sky. I might be getting the sea in, I'm not interested in that, but there's a few clouds in the sky and that might make an interesting photograph. Um, so yeah, and also I've got this rough looking floor which the camera is low enough to pick that up. So hopefully we can get some definition in the photograph as well. So I'm all set up and ready to go here, down the beach now. Got my bread for the seagulls, hopefully they'll come and uh, I've got the uh, pack set camera set up on this little tiny tripod. This little tiny tripod's a Japanese tripod called Pyramid, and this was made in, 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 in the year dot as well, so um, it's all kind of silver and old looking. I've got a cable release this time I'm not gonna use because this camera's quite fiddly to, to release the shutter here. It's just on the side, like I showed you earlier. So we're gonna use the cable release to release uh, the shutter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, this is my scene I'm looking at here, and it's quite sunny, so I'm gonna use the sunny 16 rule and set my aperture to f16. Um, it's a 125 film inside, so I'll be looking at a normal uh, shutter speed here of, of 125th of a second, but I wanna shoot faster than that because I wanna push the film by two stops. Um, so the maximum I can go to is 300. So I'm gonna set the shutter speed to 300 and then when I develop later, I'm going to develop it as though it was a 400 speed film, which hopefully will give us that grain 
um, and that high contrast, especially in the stand development side of things, that high contrast that I'm looking for. The focus point says two meters, so I dial into the lens focus there, two meters, and that's all set. All I need now is some seagulls. You know, seagulls. We've got another one there, it's four shots. Oh, there's a nice lot here. Gosh, there we go, another one. There's another shot. See if I can get one more shot. That's another shot. When they're hovering, it's quite nice. Okay, so there wasn't as many seagulls as I'd hoped for coming down the beach, um, but it was enough for me to get the shots that I needed. Um, by keeping the camera low across this floor, which is quite uh, um, a, a rugged stone floor, and this little tiny wall, like I said, there's going to be no sea in this shot, it's just going to be the cloud and the seagull. So, you know, hopefully I've got at least four to five seagulls in some of these shots and they're all kind of motion moving. I know I was shooting at 300th of a second, um, but you know, these, uh, these seagulls do, do shift. So hopefully I've got some, some motion blur in there as well. So the recent flu I've had is really starting to get to me now and I'm getting out of breath talking, but uh, at, least, at least we got out today and uh, we've got some photographs going on. So let's get back to the dark room, develop this film and see what we've got. Okay, so I've got my developing tank here. I've got uh, uh, 400 millilitres of water, and I'm going to be mixing the rod and for the stand development of um, 100 parts of water to one part of rod and So that will equate to four millilitres of rod and with 400 millilitres of water. I'm just going to use this syringe to get four millilitres out, put it into the jug, and then give it a good stir and mix, like mix the chemical up and then put it into the developing tank and invert for about 30 seconds of inversions and give it a good whack and leave it there to stand and I'm going to leave this to stand for about about three hours normally if I do stand development uh, in, in, in the normal exposure time would be about an hour um, with two inversions in between so it's kind of like a semi stand but uh, in this case I've pushed the film by a couple of stops so I'm going to leave it for about three hours in uh, stand development and see what we come up with after that. Okay so uh, you can see the negatives here um, <laughs> when I took the film out of the Braun Packset camera I actually thought I'd rewound it back and when I opened the back I realised the film hadn't been round at all so that's why we've got this massive light leak going here, but luckily enough, um, it didn't affect the rest of the roll. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or so, eight. I've got seven photographs there to play with, which uh, I'm really happy about. Um, and they all seem to be sharp, so I did my focusing correct. And uh, while I'm here, I'll just show you this light box that I've got, which is in fact my negative on a computer screen with pegs over end. Just a little tip there that I use sometimes. So um, yeah, let's take these, uh, they look really good. So let's take these negatives into the dark room and have a look under the enlarger and see what we can do on the print. I was a bit disappointed that I let light leak onto that negative because I only got about seven shots, six or seven shots out of the, um, out of the, the, the shots I took. So <laughs> nice little light leak there when I opened the back of the camera um, and I wasn't, over impressed with the photographs that I got. The composition and the exposures were okay, it was just the situation of the birds and stuff, of the seagulls. Um, you know, maybe I should have gone down and just shot a whole bunch of 36, and out of that 36, I might have got one decent one um, where the seagulls were doing something, uh, something that I liked. But I have found a photograph or negative that I do like. Um, it's not brilliant but it's the best out of a bad bunch. So I'm gonna print that one, and this is it on the easel now, I'll just show you what it looks like. And here it is, this is the one that I've chosen to work with. So I've actually printed this over size, you can see it overlapping here on this area, um, and just get my composition right. I feel like the, the camera may be you know, getting too much floor in. Um, but I was hoping that the seagulls would be around the floor as well, so you, know, you, can't, you can't judge it. Anyway, let's get on with this. Um, really dark here, area here. 
uh, and I did say I want to contrast the print. We've got some detail here. We've got details in the birds. And uh, this particular one you can see is wing. It's got motion in it, which I wanted. And uh, a couple of little seagulls here. So I can't really tell what it looks like until I've done some jiggery pokery with uh, some paper and some chemicals. So let's get straight into the developing side. I'm not going to go through the test prints, but I'm just going to do some test prints and show you what, what happened and, and um, what I come up with. Okay, so I've just done a series of test prints and uh, I'm quite surprised at the results. I'm quite happy with them. Uh, the first test print I did was here, which is uh, using my test print machine. You can accurately see the segments. And these were segments of five seconds um, at f, f8 on the enlarger lens. And uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 30 was the best overall here. I, was, I could see the noise now that's uh, been generated. I've got the contrast here that I need. So 30 seconds was a good um, benchmark for me. The second test strip, which is here, I did, was uh, coming across the seagull and, and down onto the information at the bottom of the uh, image. And I did that at 30 seconds just to see what the seagull was doing up here. I already knew this area. So that was 30 seconds. I realized this was too light. So I decided to keep this at 30 seconds at the bottom and this time um, give an extra 30 seconds on, on this area here. So 60 seconds in total for this area. And it gave the, uh, the seagull a little bit more contrasty look. But uh, I wanted to go a little bit further and see if I can kind of make the seagull get darker and more gritty and grainy. So on the last test strip I did uh, was 30 seconds at the bottom, then another 30 seconds I burned in. But this time I used the contra Contrast 5 filter and burned in another 30 seconds using that just to try and crush the blacks a bit more. And I'm kind of happy with the way that this one's gone. I've got the grain in there and it's looking edgy and rough, which is what I was talking about in the first place uh, this morning. So I'm going to take a piece of paper out. I'm going to do a, a print going against going uh, on the lines of this test print and see how it looks and see if we need to make any further developments. Okay, that's the easel that I'm using. Put the 10 by 8 in there. Just going to check one more time that it's aligned and it's also in focus. Just turn the light off. Pull the larger lens to 2.8. Give me a bit brighter. I'm just going to check the focus. I'm looking at this area because I know the bird's um, in flight, so I'm looking down at this area to check the focus. And I'm glad I did because it's slightly out of focus now. Now I've brought it back into focus. I'm glad I did that. The enlarger slipped. And these are old enlargers and uh, you know, shit happens, but right. Let's take that away. Put the enlarger lens back to F8 and get an A4 piece of paper out. Like so, and I'll stay very still while this is happening because I don't want to um, move the enlarger at all. I've got floorboards underneath me, so. Okay. The next 30 seconds we're going to now just dodge the bottom and burn the top part in. Just rock it back and forward gently and then just start moving up slightly so it kind of gradients in but not too much. I'm just now rocking it back. There you go. And now we put the grade 5 filter in. And the grade 5 was 30 seconds on the top part of the image. There it goes. So I'll just let that work. Just again, slowly rocking it. Oh, 
little bit more heavier here now and that's done so let's uh, go through the development process now just holding the back of it into the developer has already started to come through there's a question about developer weakness that I got from one of the comments um, I've had this developer now for about I, I mixed it last week last weekend so it's about seven days and I've only used it uh, in one session it's been bottled um, diluted and bottled since and it seems to be working fine I'll know if the developer's uh, starting to exhaust itself because it will just take longer to longer than normal to develop. But this is good so far. I'm just going to leave that in a little bit longer. Okay, then I'll stop and fix and uh, turn the lights on. See how this print looks. in the stop bar fair so it's not going to get it's going to take all the developer off so it's not going to um, develop any further in fact you know what if I left it in the developer nothing else would have happened I don't think it would have made any difference and finally try and drip off as much of that as you can before you put it into your fix into the fixer and then after about a minute or so in there I'll be safe to turn the lights on okay and there it is I've just pinned the print up onto the uh, onto my board there and let's evaluate the final print well I've certainly got the noise and the and you know the noise in the image and the grittiness which I liked um, the C is there I didn't think I was going to get the C but we got the C We've got a few seagulls, like I said. I wish there was more. I wish I'd got more seagulls, but you know, looking back, I should have shot. I just should have put a roll of 36 in the camera and just shot the whole 36 while I was there. Um, and the only other thing I'm looking at is is the bread. You know, the seagulls. That's what they're here for. They're looking for food, and there's the scraps of bread on the floor. So it kind of works. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong way of taking a photograph in anyone's photography if you like if, if I really love this print and I really like it and I enjoy it that's good enough it doesn't matter what anyone says I like this print I'll put it on my I'll put it on my wall and I'll feel proud that I did this so you know it, there's no right or wrong way of doing photography and what I wanted to do with this with these seagulls was to create a contrasty grainy gritty looking image I wasn't too bothered if the seagulls were going to be out of focus as long as my composition was right and the composition worked out better then I thought, because I've actually got the C just above the wall there, I didn't think I was going to get that in, because I was so low down. Okay, so there you go, I'm now going to leave this one to dry. And once it's dried, I'm going to frame it, put it in a frame and uh, put it at the end of this video. So, um, but yeah, I hope, I hope you enjoyed that one. It's quite cool using the old camera. It is quite tricky, it's quite fiddly. Um, you know, and today weren't the perfect conditions, but it was quite, it was bright sun. I didn't have a light meter, I was judging the light using the sunny 16 rule. And uh, we did some stand development because uh, I wanted to get this contrasty, punchy look. And I'm quite happy with the, with the end result. So um, I hope you guys learned a little bit from this video and enjoyed watching it. And uh, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It always helps. And thanks very much. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.